Right, here I am, and this is why you absolutely have to plan doing stuff like this. Hello, and welcome to what is maybe the first real series on this channel. But first let me address uh, the rubber band gun thing that has been going on for a few months now. Um, I'm probably going to stop making them, as you probably have noticed. They are fun to make, really, but I can't, I can't make rubber bands my entire life, and my interests have expanded uh, since I've started studying engineering, mechanical engineering. Um, I've started doing machining and just engineering in general. So I will probably not make any rubber bands anymore, so you can unsubscribe if you're just here for robot guns. Uh, well, maybe I will make some robot guns when the laser is finished, but we'll see about that. Now let's uh, talk about what we actually are going to do in this series. Uh, we are going to build a new laser cutter, new 40 watt CO2 laser cutter, and you can actually see the old one behind you there. And as you can see, it definitely needs to be rebuilt. And the first episode is going to be about um, the old laser cutter. You can you will see what this thing is about, how it actually works, and how CO2 laser cutters actually work in general. And we are going to see why I need to build a new one. And because of limited resources such as money and time, I'm not going to be able to order all the parts at once. So I'll have to cut the whole building process up in uh, episodes but that actually is a good thing because I'll have the opportunity to talk about the laser in detail and to cut, discuss every little uh, aspect of it. Now the goal of this series is of course the new laser cut for me but also the secondary goal or the secondary main goal actually is to make you understand how a laser cutter works and how you maybe you can build one on your own. It's not actually too hard. You just have to understand uh, how the different components work and what components you of course need. And with every new episode you might be able to understand a new feature of a laser cutter. All right, then let's get started and I'll show you how this little thing actually works. Alright, this is the laser cutter I've been talking about. I've actually been sitting here. And as you can see, I've used some silicone to uh, seal this whole thing up so that the smoke can't uh, rush out of the uh, slits here. So it all goes away using this uh, fan. Alright, let's get started with the details. Now this, this is the panel, um, it actually belongs to the uh, controller I've bought about two years ago and uh, nothing we can change about that. We are actually going to use this same controller on the new laser cut as well. Then we've got a uh, emergency stop which is absolutely mandatory for laser cutter. You hit this and it, everything just stops, actually cuts the main power and uh, you know, this is the main main power source. Now let's get started with the business end of the laser, which is this one, and uh, you can just put this to the side. And oh yeah, that's something I've lasered some, some days ago. And you can see this is the laser head from uh, a very cheap laser cutter called K40. I think some of you guys actually may know this laser cutter. And here you can see the beginning of the tube. Um, and this is the mechanics of the laser cut. And as you can see, it's it's really wobbly and kind of all over the place. It's not really a good design. Now in this mess behind this laser cutter is uh, the pump, which actually pumps new air into the uh, laser nozzle. You saw it just 10 seconds ago. And this is the water, which cools the laser tube in here. And yeah, some switches and stuff. Now because we'll have to rebuild this whole thing, I will have to 
remove these side panels, which I'll do in the next hour or two. And when I'm finished, I'll show you how this whole thing uh, works in detail. All right, here I am, and this is why you absolutely have to plan doing stuff like this. I didn't actually have a real CAD model of this laser cutter, so I just kind of winged it. And, I mean, you can cut stuff with this, but, yeah. Right, so let me first address how this actually technically works. And after this, I'm going to go over the, all the inherent design flaws that this machine has. So, right, I guess we'll go backwards. This is the laser tube you can see here. And you can't actually see it, but it, but it is uh, filled with distilled water on the outer layer. So it can cool the inner um, resonator. And the resonator is the part that actually creates the laser beam. And the laser beam is created by putting um, about 20,000 volts of voltage across these two electrodes here. And this excites the CO2 molecules in the uh, laser resonator, which creates the beam. If you want to know how, this, how lasers actually work in detail, I can um, put a video by the engineer guy, Bill Hammack, in the description. And he really did a great job on explaining how lasers work. Now the 20,000 volts are getting created in here. Um, this thing turns 220 volts AC in 20,000 volts DC. And this is one of the most dangerous parts in this uh, whole machine. So everything has to be grounded absolutely perfectly because you don't want to get shocked by the voltage this, king, this bad boy can put out. Right, so the laser, of course, has to know when to actually turn on and when to turn off. And this gets coordinated in this little uh, thing here. Oh, it's actually not bolted down. Great. Yeah, this actually puts out the signals for the stepper motors and for this thing. So this is basically the brain of the machine. And this controller gets um, its power from this little power module here. And these are the stepper motor drivers, which turn these signals, or the signals this thing puts out, into usable uh, stepper motor signals, which uh, the stepper motors can actually use. So basically there's not much happening in here, but um, it looks kind of complicated because of the mess that's uh, in here, the cables are everywhere, and you know, that kind of stuff happens when you don't plan anything. All right, this is the business end of the laser, and the laser beam gets put out here. It shoots into this laser head here, here's a mirror, and here's a lens. And the lens, of course, focuses the beam onto the material, and therefore cuts it. Or engraves, whatever you want. And the stepper motors I have talked about are here. This controls the, uh, whoops, the x-axis. As you can see, this is not fixed in place. Another bad thing about this laser. And this is the y-axis motor. And you may ask yourself, why is this thing here? This is the connection for the air that's coming in here. Because when you um, cut something, you need to um, blow out every residue that's left by the cut. And that's done by this um, high-pressure air. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. We've got some end switches in here, so that um, when this thing does something weird, we don't crash the machine. Yeah, that's basically it. Alright, now let's address all the inherent design flaws that this laser machine has. First of all, uh, space efficiency. As you can see, this is basically the effective cutting area. It's about a... Uh, a3 sheet, so about uh, 40 times 30 centimeters, and for this huge machine, that's really not a lot. So we will improve that on the next version. Then accuracy, so you can see we've got no actual uh, 
belt tensioning system, so it's kind of floppy. Another bad thing is that this can just move, which means that if you kind of bump the laser, this can knock the alignment off so that the laser actually doesn't work anymore. So you really have to be careful with this thing, which of course shouldn't be the case. Other than that, the uh, exhaust uh, ventilation, which is around here, you can't actually see it, it's around here, is above the laser, which usually is not a good thing because um, the smoke actually gets created under the table. So in the next design, we'll put the exhaust fan under the laser and above the laser. So we can uh, remove the smoke as efficiently as possible. Another bad thing, of course, is the uh, the housing of this thing. It's 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 really janky. It it moves all over the place, and I definitely want to uh, get rid of this kind of messiness. Another bad thing is that um, all the power electronics are kind of you know they're not fixed into place. They just can move everywhere. And the uh, water bucket and the power strip, or the thing that powers uh, everything, is outside of the laser and just kind of all over the place. So in the next design we will fix everything into place so that you can actually just move the laser machine wherever you want to without kind of destroying the whole thing.